only mode. Hello, uh, welcome to the welcome webinar for international attendees attending ACA, ACPA 2015, our convention in Tampa, Florida. Um, I'm Ted Carroll. I work for ACPA in Washington, D.C. I am the team lead for career and global treks in the office, so I manage our career development uh, as well as our international engagement with individuals and organizations in other countries. And I'm happy to be here with, uh, with Lena um, Kowalowskis Crane. I'm sorry, Lena, if I mispronounced your name, by the way. Um, Lena is here joining me. Uh, she's representing the local arrangements team for Tampa uh, on the commission uh, on the convention team. And she's also a, a member of the Commission for Global Dimensions of, of Student Development within ACPA. Uh, Lena, welcome. Thank you, Ted. I'm excited to be here. And the, the purpose of this webinar today is threefold. Number one, to assist attendees coming from outside of the United States with networking, uh, to prep about convention highlights and, and other components of convention. Number two, to introduce some new initiatives and upcoming efforts that we'll see at Tampa and beyond. And then finally, the third, to answer questions and help folks from outside the United States navigate the registration process. Great. Well, uh, first, um, in terms of arriving um, and orientation to convention, we have information on the uh, Tampa website um, about uh, airport and travel information, because um, obviously that's uh, an important part of um, attending. Um, if you go to our Tampa page, which we have here, and go to the Accommodations tab, uh, you will find information about the uh, hotels. Um, that we have picked out alongside the convention center. Uh, there are currently four options. There's the Embassy Suites, uh, the Hilton, uh, the Tampa Marriott Waterside, and the Westin Tampa, all close by the convention center. Um, we do uh, request that you, uh, when you register, that you please select one of these convention hotels. Um, we have the special rates included um, with the convention center as part of uh, convention um, and you are uh, strongly encouraged to register uh, to book a hotel room um, quickly after registering because the room blocks that we have reserved do fill up quickly um, and uh, we'll have contact information for us at the end of the presentation but obviously feel free to contact either Lena or myself if you have any questions. Um, we also have information um, about um, local arrangements uh, once you get to Tampa, getting around Tampa, um, close by the convention center. There's some information about, um, about uh, the roads and getting to and from the airport. Um, uh, information, as you can see, about buses and taxis. Um, the weather hopefully will be quite nice in Tampa at that time of the year. Um, you're welcome to grab a, a bike. Um, and then there's some other information about other information about what Tampa has to offer. There's quite a bit to see um, in town and close by. Um, another point that I would just mention um, related to travel um, before I forget is if you need a visa uh, for traveling to Tampa and to the United States, uh, please feel free to contact me. Uh, I, I, I'm happy to work with you on a, a visa letter for the for the embassy or, or any other uh, entity that might need it. Um, I'm happy to help with you on a case by case basis. We do it every year for uh, international attendees attending convention. So, um, Lena, do you want to talk at all about um, networking opportunities and receptions? Sure, sure. And this is something that we'll mention a little bit later in the presentation as well. Um, but there are a number of networking opportunities and receptions um, specific to uh, people interested in global dimensions of education, uh, international uh, issues, and international education. Um, and many of those are sponsored by the Commission for Global Dimensions of Student Development. Uh, but those are important to uh, register. Uh, as you register, there's a pre-conference opportunity and a number of other things um, that will fall on your radar as you go through the registration process. 
Right. And I just realized I jumped ahead, actually, after, so air, airport and travel information we talked a bit about. Uh, as far as registration itself, the important dates that you want to try to remember are December 19th, which is this coming Friday, and February 6th, um, as far as registration. If you go to the Back to the Tampa page um, and click on the registration tab, um, we have information for uh, for U.S. members on, on the top and, and student members. If you scroll down the page, um, we have a new policy this year in place for international colleagues who will be attending uh, traveling from abroad. Uh, these are based on World Bank uh, rates as far as GDP at, uh, at PPP. Um, and you can see there's quite a few countries that fall into different categories based on, uh, based on those figures. And uh, the, the rates change. There's sort of three columns, as you can see. Um, the rates change on uh, well, let's see, early registration ends on this Friday the 19th. Um, regular registration ends on Friday, February 6th. You can see this here at the top. Um, and so, and we do have on-site registration as well. Uh, but you do want to try to take advantage of those uh, of those rates if you can. And uh, please feel free to contact me if you have questions, and I'll help you with the registration process. We have some information in other languages here at the bottom. Um, you can either email me or, or my phone number is listed here as well. Um, so the, again, the dates to remember, uh, December 19th, and uh, regular registration is February 6th. Um, and I think we can go on. Um, as this is what I just mentioned, so the prorated rates for, um, uh, for, for international attendees, um, it is something that we will try to use for other uh, PD events as well as conventions uh, down the road as well. Great. So the next thing we'll talk a bit about is ACPA structure. And, and like any organization, um, ACPA has a number of layers and, and some lingo. And so this is to kind of demystify some of that before your uh, registration and arrival. Um, when we refer to the international office, that is the uh, the main operating hub of ACPA as an organization. Um, that is where TED is based out of, and it's located in Washington, D.C., uh, and that is the, the full-time um, paid staff that, that governs daily uh, ACPA operations. Uh, the governing board is the, the volunteer elected governing body of ACPA, so there's a, a president, uh, a president-elect who's the vice president, um, and a number of, of roles related to uh, member development and member services uh, that are elected positions. Within the organization, there are a number of entity groups. Uh, and the two or, or three umbrella hubs of the entity groups are uh, known as standing committees, commissions, and then the state and regional divisions. Uh, the, the lingo that we use uh, is that we say standing committees are made up of who we are, and commissions are made up of, of what we do. Uh, and if we go back to the um, to the ACPA website, we can give an example of exactly what that looks like. So here we are on, on the ACPA website, um, just the main page of myacpa.org. And if we talk about uh, getting involved, you can see that breakdown here. So we've got the standing committees, as we said, who we are. Um, so there's a number of identity groups here, uh, including uh, the Standing Committee for Disability, for graduate students and new professionals, which makes up uh, about half of the ACP organization. Um, the LGBTA Standing Committee, Men and Masculinity, Multicultural Affairs, Women, and then also the Mid-Level Community of Practice. So we're talking about identities, who we are. Um, then when we get into commissions, that is uh, what we do. So you'll see a number of functional areas um, within higher education and student affairs listed here and their uh, commissions here. And then I think at the intersection of both of those would be global dimensions of student development, which is both who we are and what we do. Uh, it's a group that, that serves both of those aims. And then finally, uh, state and international divisions. So please scroll to that page now. A number of states and regions, uh, as well as international divisions, have um, entity groups as well. And so on this page, by clicking on state and international divisions, you can see the um, different areas that have those. 
And if I could just add quickly, uh, there is one international division I should mention that you might have uh, seen there, which is uh, we do have an international uh, division in the Caribbean, uh, but we are also in discussions about adding uh, other international divisions uh, down the road. So, Great. Yep. And there's no limitation uh, about which group's members can join. Um, it's, it's elective based on experience and interests and, and future directions. and. Um, when you become an ACPA member and, and are filling out your member profile, it's really a matter of just clicking the boxes. So um, we get the question all the time about, well, how do I become involved or how do I join a standing committee or commission or division? Um, and you have the opportunity to do that pretty much by, by checking a box. And with that, we'll move to local arrangements, for example. Right. Well, so... Um, as we sort of uh, talked ab about a bit before, um, in terms of local arrangements, um, there will be some information um, hopefully available to you at, uh, at, at the airport. We're working on some potential flyers to have uh, and people sort of stationed um, uh, there. The airport, the Tampa International Airport, is uh, fairly close to the convention center. It's only um, about a 15-minute uh, drive. Um, as we kind of mentioned before, there are uh, both buses as well as taxis um, that can take you to the convention center. Um, uh, you can get a flat rate uh, taxi for around $25. Um, we, uh, if, if you have questions, obviously you can reach out to us and we can um, look to help you um, upon arrival. Um, we have this map here um, of uh, sort of the downtown Tampa area. Um, we have, as you can see, sort of in the middle there, the, uh, the convention center where it is. Um, I don't know, is it possible to scroll out and see sort of the to the airport? I'm not sure if we can. Um, sort of on the map, but um, the airport's not far away, um, and it's all the, the convention center, as you can see, is also close to downtown, um, and there's quite a bit to see as far as uh, restaurants and um, the University of Tampa is there, um, just north a little bit. Um, Lena, from as far as lo from local arrangements from the Tampa team, do you have anything you you want to add? We are anticipating that that convention attendees see this as a as a destination convention, um, and as a result, we're trying to do a number of uh, provide a number of family friendly resources, anticipating that we'll have some um, non registered uh, guests at convention, uh, and so. I think you'll see a, a surge of family-friendly resources in addition to our usual local arrangements. Okay, great. So next, uh, languages at convention. Um, and Ted mentioned that, that the differential registration rates was a new initiative. Um, another new initiative largely to serve um, constituents from outside of the United States uh, is a push to be more inclusive of languages. And so new for 2015, you'll see an increase in signage and resources um, provided in four languages, which are English, French, Spanish, and traditional Chinese. And some of the rationale behind that was to reflect uh, our diverse makeup and, and also um, the use of language and, and culture in our upcoming host city. So we'll be in Tampa this year, of course, um, but in Montreal for 2016, Houston uh, shortly after that, and, and beyond. So um, we'll really start to, to amp up the use of multiple languages. Uh, similarly, a volunteer position uh, moving forward uh, includes a role for uh, access around language. So that's interesting and, and something new we'll see. And that brings us to how to become uh, more familiar with, uh, with navigating convention. And there are a number of resources on site uh, in Tampa to do just that. Uh, number one is the new member orientation, and that will be outlined in the program booklet and resources online, including social media. Uh, so new member orientation will talk a little bit about organizational structure, you know, some of the entity groups and things that we mentioned here today, uh, but also uh, the makeup of convention. Uh, and then there's also a couple of key sessions. Number one, uh, it's been called in the past, Find Your Way in ACPA. 
which is a little bit more of a, of a breakdown of that content. And then also, uh, we get a lot of questions about how to navigate the ACPA publications processes. And so there's a, a session, at least one session, uh, specific to just that, everything from development to about campus to um, books and media, so navigating those processes. And then finally, we've got uh, volunteering at convention. And, and volunteering is, is arguably one of the best ways to really engage with uh, the convention and the association. Um, it's a way to engage in, in a number of ways, everything from um, meeting new people to understanding the behind the scenes of convention um, and certainly the organization. It helps you to connect to colleagues near and far, um, to really network and, and become connected to entity groups. Uh, and there are countless opportunities, um, everything from behind the scenes um, working with paperwork and, and flyers and folder stuffing uh, to uh, interfacing with members to working at uh, big events. And the way to sign up for those um, is to sign up on the Volunteer at Convention uh, website, which is linked to the registration page. Great. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll talk next year about um, uh, some particular activities and, and programs at Convention that might be of interest. Um, the first one, and actually, if, if I can ask, uh, Lena, could you go back to the uh, the Tampa website, um, if you still have that that link open? There's something I should have mentioned earlier, which is um, related to this. Um, a uh, an important um, uh, tab that you want to take a look at is uh, the program tab. Um, if you, that's great. There, if you can, um, if you can see this, th this is uh, an important. A couple, several important uh, pages are here. Uh, the schedule to glance uh, t uh, page is a, um, a a great way to sort of see the obviously the schedule uh, and sort of the uh, a general summary of what's of what's going on. Convention can be very overwhelming for a lot of first time attendees because there are so many different programs and receptions and uh pre con programs as we call them. Uh the the schedule at a glance hopefully helps you sort of keep a lot of the, the, the major components uh together, even though as you can see just from looking at it, it, it in itself has a lot of information. Um, under the program tab, eventually we will have uh, sort of a larger schedule of, of um, individual programs, and you'll be able to look up programs by different themes and categories. Um, if you can click on the um, uh, the pre-convention colloquia tab, we have what are called pre-convention colloquia programs, or pre-cons as we call them, and uh, these are uh, separate from the, they're tied to convention, but they're actually before convention formally starts, as the name uh, suggests. Um, one that we are uh, hoping you, you might be interested in is the first full day uh, precon program on Thursday, March the fifth, which is the uh, Commission on Global Dimensions and Student Developments, uh, Global Professionals and Student Affairs and Services precon, um, and there's more information about each of these as you can see here. Um, this is a great way to network and meet people in the field um, in, uh, for, from other countries. We're going to have a great program this year talking about um, you know, different perspectives uh, from, from various people working abroad. And, and, and uh, it, it promises to be a lot of um, uh, good information as well as an opportunity to just you know, meet, uh, meet people. Uh, there, will be, there should be a, a nice lunch. Uh, I believe it attached to it. Um, there are other ones, though, as you can see on the, the pre-con page. If you have interest in um, in different areas of scholarship, um, and we're still filling, I, I think, a few in on a couple of the days. But if you're in, if you're interested in the um, the pre-cons, uh, this is where you'd find it. Um, something that I, I do want to mention. Uh, also, is I, I help to manage Career Central, uh, which is our sort of uh, the program in convention that has uh, a lot of professional development opportunities, um, and we do things like uh, we have a resume review, uh, which is completely free to participate in. We also do mock interviews, 
um, and we have some uh, programs that are really um, focused on on professional development in, in uh, areas like how to use social media, um, networking for uh, the, you know the next job search. Uh, we haven't. We'll have more information on the Career Central page, um, uh, which is sort of the middle tab on the Tampa page in the future. Um, and then there are other programs as well. Uh, the the important page that I would try to uh, definitely highlight or maybe bookmark. Uh, is the schedule to glance uh, though going forward um, yep and again I we, we're aware that it's a lot and so f feel free to reach out to us if you have questions about um, what what a particular program looks like um, who the intended audience is etc I think we can move to the next page here so in conclusion, uh, a few helpful tips for navigating convention for the first time. Um, number one, as we mentioned, there are a number of intentional networking opportunities, and some of those exist through the Global uh, Dimensions of Student Development Commission meetings and events. Um, most of those are open, uh, so you don't need to be a member. You can be a first-time attendee, and it's pretty easy to, to become involved with, with that organization in particular. Um, next is that there is an international reception, um, which all, all are certainly welcome at that event. Uh, next, there's a hospitality booth. So it's a, an easy place, uh, a one-stop shop, so to speak, to get information about the convention experience and about UCCA as an organization um, and help you to navigate everything from uh, the local arrangements component to the larger convention. And then finally, uh, taking advantage of, of building your own professional development curriculum. Um, you can seek tracks, whether through entity groups, um, through uh, global dimensions related uh, content, sponsored edu educational programs um, and events, and also the, the pre-colloquium events. And um, as you, you may know, uh, we have quite a few um, pieces going on in social media surrounding both ACPA year-round as well as convention. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We have a Twitter hashtag. Uh, we have a LinkedIn group page, which will have a lot uh, going on about convention uh, in the weeks uh, ahead. Um, you're more than welcome to uh, more than welcome to use any of these to. Um, uh, you know, ask questions to um, encourage participation among your colleagues. Um, and something that we would also really welcome is if you're willing to blog uh, for us, we would really w um, welcome uh, international perspectives on, um, on, on the field, on your work, where you are, um, on what you're hoping to uh, take back from Tampa with you. Um, we've in the past uh, have, have, have posted blogs from international participants, and it's something we always look forward to. Great. So that wraps up our content for today. Um, if you have questions on anything that we covered or things that we didn't, uh, both of the email addresses for Ted and I are here on the screen. That's tcarroll, C-A-R-R-O-L-L, -L, at acpa.nche.edu or L-K-A-V-A-L-I-A -A -A at umd.edu. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Lena. For